Believe it or not, there's a right and wrong way and a right and wrong time to introduce the subject of forgiveness, especially with an abortion-minded woman or with a woman that's just had an abortion. The scripture has a lot to say about forgiveness, so join us as we talk through this subject. I felt your passion touched your heart. All right, well, welcome back to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast. Uh, we wanted to do an episode uh, specifically about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness is an important topic, right? When we're talking about um, biblical topics and subjects, forgiveness is one that comes up a lot. It should. When we're out on the sidewalks at the abortion clinics, and I'm sure those who are in pregnancy centers, those who deal with you know pro-life issues, you deal with the topic of forgiveness and people talking about forgiveness, in particular people who are um, post-abortive or people who are going to abort, which is what we're going to talk about mm-hmm. from our point of view on the sidewalks and the uh, the subject of forgiveness. And, you know, what I'm talking about specifically is people going into an abortion clinic and saying, you know, God's a forgiving God, and therefore I'll go in here and have my abortion, and I'll ask for forgiveness, and, and, and I'll be good to go. Yeah. And so how do you address that biblically? And, and, and what do you say in those situations? You know, what do you say when you're in a pregnancy center? My wife worked in a pregnancy center and, and still does some. And in the counseling sessions, you'll hear the same, some of the same things that we hear on the sidewalk. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know God's a forgiving God, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to have my abortion, and He's going to forgive me. And they deal with that in pregnancy centers. They deal with that, and, you know, maybe in any realm of ministry when you're dealing with people actively involved in, in sinful behavior, and there's this attitude of God's going to forgive me. Right. So how do you address that? I mean, because you have this biblical truth that God is a God that offers forgiveness. He is mm-hmm. a forgiving God. Mm-hmm. But then you have folks that take the forgiveness of God and God's willingness to forgive as a license to sin. Right. So how right. do you deal with that? Yeah, and that's and what we're going to talk about. It does. It becomes a, what we see over and over again. It becomes a, a rationalization for yeah. sin. Yeah. God is a forgiving God. Therefore, I can go do really anything, mm-hmm. and God will forgive me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it seems that the Apostle Paul dealt with the same mm-hmm. the same subject, where mm-hmm. he says, you know, one point should we sin more so that grace might abound much mm-hmm. more? Mm-hmm. May it never be. Yeah. God forbid. Yeah. That we would take that attitude, and it right. really is dealing with a heart attitude. Mm-hmm. It's dealing with. Um, the attitude of, of people's hearts going to abortion clinics or doing just in general. And, you know, as Christians, we got to be careful not to have this attitude mm-hmm. of just, you know, we can do what we want to because God's forgiving and we're really presuming upon the forgiveness of God. We are. And, and is he required? Is he required to forgive us? Is he required to do anything right, yeah. towards well, us? Well, like I was telling you when we were preparing, and this is something I'll say actually on a regular basis at mm-hmm. the abortion clinics, when I'm talking to, to dads, I'm talking to moms, I'll say, you know what? God is not required to forgive anyone for anything. Right. God's not beholden to us. It's not like, you know, God was created for us. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's the attitude that a lot of folks have, that God's like this genie in a bottle. Mm-hmm. He was created for us to make us feel good. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of what's put forth in, you know, in, in a lot of the Christian books and teachings is out there. Somehow the world revolves around us. Yeah. And... You know, the focus is just us when mm-hmm. actually the focus is God. Mm-hmm. We were made for him. Mm-hmm. He's not required. We don't, you know, he's not like a genie in a, in, a, in a bottle or lamp or whatever. You rub the thing and you get what you want. Right, right. <laughs> you know, God is God. He made everything. He's not required to do anything for anyone. Right. But we see he's merciful and he's willing. Mm-hmm. And he does put conditions on us, though, yeah. in, in terms of forgiveness. There are things that are required of us for his forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and one of the questions that I was thinking about as I was pondering this topic uh, is, is there unconditional forgiveness mm-hmm. from God? And if not, well, what are the conditions yeah. for forgiveness? Well. Before we jump into that, let's think about some of the dangers here. Okay. Because what we're talking about in particular is we're talking about women going into an abortion clinic. Mm-hmm. We're talking about abortion-minded women. 
And what are some of the dangers? Like, why would we even have a concern about forgiveness? Because, you know, most people might think, you know, forgiveness is important. We need to be forgiving, and we do. And and God's forgiving, and, and you know, forgiveness, 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 and it's important, blah, blah, blah. We don't yeah. want to yeah. muddy up the waters yeah. of forgiveness. Okay, I get that. Yeah. But what are the dangers with us? You know, maybe maybe a woman's walking into an abortion clinic, and, and we yell out, you know, God will forgive you. What would be the danger of doing that? And that's so dangerous. And I so love that question because so many loving Christians think that the message that we should be calling out at at the sidewalk of an abortion center should be one of love, unconditional love, and forgiveness. And it is used over and over again. You and I have seen it over and over again. It is used as a motivation and excuse to go and do this very horrific, sinful act of killing their own child. Yeah. So forgiveness is an absolutely critical message for all of us. Yeah, we absolutely. all need to understand forgiveness. But the timing in a pro-life um, ministry such as a, on the sidewalk in front of an abortion center, the timing of when that message of forgiveness is given is really important. So many times I have been on a sidewalk in front of the abortion center and had a woman say, I know it's wrong. I know that God doesn't want me to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because God is a forgiving God. Yeah. And, and I think that we do need to grapple with very specifically what are some ways that, that we can counter that statement because I've heard it over yeah. and over again. Mm-hmm. I think most of our counselors have. So it is a great, great question, question Daniel, that, um, uh, that there is a danger yeah. in, the, in when and how to present the message of forgiveness and the counter message or other points of confession and repentance yeah. because they're all tied yeah. together. I mean, you know, the, the danger in my mind is that, you know, if I preach the message of forgiveness, um, and I don't want to say too early, but I guess in, in the wrong timing that mm-hmm. I am part of the justification, or at yes. least what I'm saying is part of the justification yeah. for a person to go in and kill a child. Yeah. How many times have we had people who are contemplating abortion talk with us for a long time, asking a lot of questions, and really what they're doing is kind of fishing for an excuse, for us mm-hmm. to say something that excuses them to go and have the abortion. And sadly, forgiveness can be one of those things. Yeah. So I, I'm i increasingly careful about if it's a woman going into an abortion center, I rarely speak about forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they have made that statement, um, God is a forgiving God, so I'm going to go do this, and I know he will forgive me. Yeah. And I know we're going to get into that. About yeah. Well, I think one of, the, one of the hang-ups is... Okay, so the the statement, God will forgive me, mm-hmm. is actually incorrect, mm-hmm. right? Because, and we're going to talk about that again, um, because the will part is almost implies that, that he has to. Mm-hmm. Now, I think the correct statement is God can forgive you, mm-hmm. <laughs> and God mm-hmm. is willing to forgive you, mm-hmm. but the forgiveness is dependent upon your ability to repent. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've responded with, you know, to, to men especially, but also to women that I've talked to that take that attitude of, well, if I go in here, will God forgive me? And I actually will respond sometimes with, no, he mm-hmm. will not forgive you. Not if you have an attitude of, I'm going to do this, and God is required to forgive me. God is not required. That's what I'll say. I'll say, God is not required to forgive anyone for anything. And yeah. if you go in to do something that you know is wrong, and you harden your heart against God and the truth that he's telling you through his people right here, there's no promise that when you come out of that abortion clinic, your heart's going to be soft enough to even ask for forgiveness. Because if you harden your heart against God, you know, the Bible warns against searing your conscience. Like with a hard, the hard iron is, is what the Bible says. And it's this callousness that is not going to be softened before God, that is not going to be um, asking for forgiveness. You know, you've hardened your heart against God. And you're going to continue to go in hardening. And that's a, that is a scary place to be in. It is. And there's lots of verses yeah. that, that warn against that. Yeah. And here's what I want to say to folks who are listening who may mm-hmm. be right, right now thinking, well, God's forgiving and we should be 
you know, we should be gentle and we should be. And yep. we've talked about yep. that. We mm-hmm. should be, we should be kind. We don't need to be mean. We mm-hmm. don't need to be angry. But we have to understand that when we approach ministry, that we have to approach ministry on God's terms and not based on what we feel and what we think. And, and, and the idea that, you know, we don't want people to be angry with us if we don't tell them that, yeah, they're going to be forgiven if they have the abortion. It's not about them. It's not about us. It's not about our feelings. It's not about how, you know, an abortion-minded woman might look at us. It's about the Lord. And what mm-hmm. does his word say? And so mm-hmm. anytime we approach a subject, you know, I could care less what modern society says. I right. could care less what modern Christianity says. I could care less what the latest, you know, you know, slick TV preacher says in his latest book. I could care less. Mm-hmm. I want to know what saith the scriptures. Right. <laughs> so when we're talking about forgiveness and we're talking about the availability of forgiveness and the application of forgiveness, what does the Bible say? That's what I want to know. And that's and for, what we all should want to know. Absolutely. And forgiveness is, abs- is, is the most, well, I don't know, the most, it's certainly one of the most critical points of salvation. Yeah. And if you don't get forgiveness right, you're missing a major point of, of how we find our way back to God. So, um, uh, well, here's some verses okay. that, that I think are, are valuable verses when people say, um, I'm going to go do this horrible sin that I know God says I shouldn't do because he forgives. First John 3, 6, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. And here's one of my favorites. I recite this one a lot at the abortion center, Hebrews 10, 26 through 7. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. So there's this in, in both of those. If we continue in sin, if we keep on sinning, if, then we, we don't know him. He, it's, yeah. it's very clear. We don't know him. Jesus himself says this in Luke six forty six. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Yeah. So if he's our Lord then we'll obey him. Yeah. You know, one of the hangups we might have, you know, and I'm sure folks maybe just listen to those verses and you've read those verses before and you think, mm-hmm. well, you know, I have sinned <laughs> after I became a Christian. And mm-hmm. is that verse, especially in First John and the Hebrews mm-hmm. verse, is that verse discluding me? Like I can't be forgiven now because I've sinned after I became a Christian. After I become a Christian, am I supposed to be sinless and never mm-hmm. sin? No, that's not what that's saying. Right. You know, as a matter of fact, John in First John in the first part of chapter two, he says, "I write you these things, little children, that you may that you sin not. Mm-hmm. But if any of you does sin, you have an advocate with the Father." Mm-hmm. He doesn't say when, by the way, because sin should be the exception and not the rule. Yeah. But he does say if anyone sins. So John acknowledges that a Christian might fall into sin. Right. right. What he's talking about, he's talking about a lifestyle of sin. He's talking about a pattern of sin and rebellion against God. Keep on sinning, deliberately continue in sin. Continue in sin, persisting in sin. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, I guess you could play with trying to figure out, well, when have I sinned enough in this same area that I'm continuing in sin? And I think you're playing with fire. If yeah, you're absolutely. continuing in sin in, in any area. So if, if someone is walking into an abortion center, has received the knowledge of truth, they know the truth, they admit it's the truth, they say, I know this is wrong, God would not approve, but I'm going to go do it anyway. That, to me, is a continuing yeah. into sin <clears throat> when really what we're called upon is to confess our sin and repent yeah. and, and, and turn from Turn yeah, from that I, I know some some years back, <clears throat> yeah, with Ray Comfort in his ministry, and we use you know his evangelism method. I guess to me, it's the biblical method of you know law to the proud and grace to the humble. So sharing the law of God, showing people their guilt uh, before God and their sin. And he, but he gave an example talking about something al- along these lines. He gives really good analogies, and I think this one stuck in my mind. And he he gave the analogy of a, a father and son going on a fishing trip. I don't know if you ever heard this before. This is a father and son. They're on a fishing trip. And uh, they're, they're camping beside this body of water, mm-hmm. lake or pond or whatever. And the father tells the son, he says, you know, we're here, we're having fun, we're going to enjoy our time here together, but I want to warn you that in that lake are alligators. And if you go swimming in that lake, you're going to be attacked by alligators. So stay out of that, 
that lake and we'll be fine and we'll have a good time. Well, the son, you know, in the progress of time, starts thinking about, okay, wow. He told me there are alligators there. I don't see any alligators there. And it looks like it'd be fun to try to just swim across to that, that island. And, uh, and so the son jumps in the water and he swims across and sure enough just as his father warned him alligators came and attacked the young man he's he's been taken under he's about to lose his life and the father goes into the pond Mm -hmm. to get his son out and fights the alligators and gets bit himself and you know even loses a limb to rescue his son and drags him back to shore and throws him up on shore and rescues him in that way and the son looks around says thanks father for for saving me but it was really fun out there in the pond. And he goes and jumps back in the pond. Is he really understanding the gravity of what his father did for him? Is he really right. understanding the, the nature of his transgression of his father's words? Right. He's not. Right. And so right. a person that goes into a, an abortion clinic that talks about forgiveness and talks about you know God's disposition toward humanity, which is one of love and grace and forgiveness, and that's true. But then they have this attitude, so I'm going to go and swim with the alligators anyway, even though I know that, you know, and whatever. They really don't grasp the, the, the full scope of what Jesus Christ did on the cross when they have that attitude. And I would say if they have that attitude, they're not born of God. Right. They don't know the Lord. They don't know his forgiveness. Yeah. And so yeah. that's what we're dealing with for the most part. And that's a great story, and I think stories are a way to respond um, Jesus responded that way in parables all, yeah, all the time. Well, told, I've actually used that stories. story uh, with a few of the, the men that I've spoken to and, and a few of the ladies I've spoken to over the years at the abortion clinic and just gave them that, and it's yeah. something they can connect with. Yeah, you know? I, I've, I've done a similar thing with, with just a, another story where I've said, well, oh, okay, you're correct. God is a forgiving God. And, um, and, and so let me ask you this. If, if you're married— and and your husband comes to you and says there's a really great looking neighbor just moved in next door and i am going to um go have an affair with her um it means nothing i'm just attracted to her i'm gonna go i'll be right back because you are a forgiving woman and you've forgiven me so much in the past that i know you're gonna forgive me for this so honey just i'll i'll be back in 20 minutes yeah (laughs) And then I, I say to the women, would this fly with you? Would yeah, this would that be, be okay? an acceptable thing? Yeah. And they say, no. Well, no, of course it wouldn't. You're presuming. You're going and doing something that you know is going to harm and hurt and disregard the, um, the covenant that you have made with someone you love. Yeah. And you're presuming on their forgiveness when you come back. And when, when you put it in those terms, the, the women understand, well, yeah, no, I, that, that would not be okay. But that's what we're asking of God. Yeah. When we say, you are a forgiving God, therefore I'm going to break my covenant with you. I'm going to disregard your clear commands, thou shalt not murder, yeah. um, because I'm going to uh, presume on, on your forgiveness. Yeah. And like you said earlier, God's not required to forgive. Yeah. And, and God's not going to be trifled with. Right. You know, the Bible and the biblical principle, whatever you sow, that's what you'll reap. If you sow death, don't expect to, re- you know, to reap this glorious union with God and this you know, glorious reception because death brings about death. And you, yeah. you've rejected God's truth and you've re- rejected the availability of his forgiveness by exchanging that for really a lie because that's... You know, just saying that you're sorry and coming and somehow that's going to bring restoration, that's not forgiveness and that's not right. restoration and certainly not repentance. Right. And th- let me let me read to you a few verses because you just talked about wh- when you just say you're sorry, which yeah. is confession. It's the confession of, of your sorrow over your sin, mm-hmm. right? So there are some verses, lots of verses, but yeah. I'll, I'll read just a couple. And then I want to ask you about if you could talk more about that, the difference between confession and repentance and how how that is all a part of the whole uh forgiveness yeah the whole picture of forgiveness. the whole picture yeah. of forgiveness okay so romans 10 9 to 10 if you confess that jesus is lord and believe that god raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by our faith that we are put right with god it is by our confession that we are saved in psalm 32 5 then i confessed my sins to you I did not conceal my wrongdoings. I decided to confess them to you, and you forgave 
all my sins. And then the last one I'll read to you, um, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. All unrighteousness. All, I'm sorry. <laughs> all unrighteousness. So um, I know you've heard, as I have many times from women um, who are at the abortion center, well, I've said I'm sorry. Yeah. I've told God I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that, does that earn God's forgiveness? <laughs> yeah. Well, again, there's that attitude of, you know, we don't believe anyone can earn their salvation. Mm-hmm. Salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Confession is an important part mm-hmm. of repentance. And God, you know, does not reject those who honestly, like that psalm says, you know, I confess my sins to you. I did not conceal my wrongdoings. The Bible mm-hmm. says those that conceal their sins will not prosper, but those that confess and forsake them will have mercy. Mm-hmm. So there's this confession and this forsaking, and that's where repentance really comes in, because repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. You know, we think about, you know, repent. You know, that word is, I guess, maybe more of a, you know, religious word where people, you know, mm-hmm. kind of look at it. But the Greek word has some very practical implications. And some people say, well, just repent means just change your mind. No, not really. It's part, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. It's to change your mind. It's for your heart to be changed. And here's the point, uh, the important point, is it's the direction of your feet changing. It actually is a 180-degree turn. So true repentance, if a mother is going into an abortion clinic, mm-hmm. true repentance is not just confessing that what she did is wrong or what she's about to do is wrong, mm-hmm. but it's actually turning around and, <laughs> and leaving the place. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and there is a difference in, in what we're talking to, and, and we'll get to mothers who've already had abortions mm-hmm. and forgiveness because mm-hmm. that the message of forgiveness is an important message for those who've already had abortions. Right now what we're talking about is sort of a preemptive forgiveness, and is that available? Is that something right. that God offers? It's not. Right. You will not see in the Bible where... You know, someone confesses, you know, I'm about to go and commit adultery, God, but I know you're forgiving, so you'll forgive me. You don't see God receiving that Nowhere, sort of thing ever, in the scriptures. Ever, right. right. You see an attitude like this because, you know, maybe shift into a post abortive woman, somebody who's already committed sin. Mm-hmm. Psalm 51. I told you I wanted to go here because yeah. this psalm is just yeah. a powerful psalm of mm-hmm. repentance, right. confession. And repentance of sin, and this is David after he had sinned with Bathsheba, sinned in a gross way. He'd, he'd broken all all ten of the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. you know, in this in this one span of time in right, his life. Right. And he's confronted in his sin by Nathan the prophet. Mm-hmm. And this Psalm, Psalm fifty one, is is a psalm that flows out of that. And he starts it out by saying, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. He, he goes on to say, against you, this is in verse 4, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. So he's acknowledging this important point that when we sin, it's not just against people. Mm-hmm. It's against God himself. Right. You know, the sin of abortion, that sin is against that baby mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. But more importantly even than that, it's a sin against God. And David acknowledged here in Psalm 51, that the sin that he committed with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah and all of that was not just a sin against Uriah. It wasn't just a sin against Bathsheba. It wasn't just a sin against Israel because he was their king. It was a sin against God himself. And then he goes on moving, moving uh, down to, to an important point here. when we're talking about confession and forgiveness is this. It says, O Lord, uh, open my lips and my mouth shall flow forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. And you do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God, or a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, these, O God, you will not despise. Broken and contrite. Broken and contrite. So Does contrition. Does that mean self-righteous and self, I, I know I'm going to go do this, yeah. and then I will ask forgiveness. It means... I'm I'm a worm. I yeah, have, I contrition have, is an acknowledgement yeah. that we've sinned against a holy God. Yeah. Contrition is 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 almost the picture of sackcloth and ashes. I mean, mm-hmm. there are those who, in the Old Testament, who put on sackcloth and ashes as an outward sign of contrition in their hearts mm-hmm. over the sin of their people, over their own sin, and and 
you know, God is not at, God doesn't need us groveling in the dirt and all that. It's not about that. But it, God wants your heart. You know, that's what God has always been after. He's been after the human heart. And the human heart that is hard and just basically presumes upon the forgiveness of God, mm-hmm. like you're going to forgive me, mm-hmm. is not the heart that God is after. Mm-hmm. He's after a broken, like it says here, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. That's what God yeah. is after. Yeah. Broken to yourself and yeah. your self-desires and with a heart that is seeking God's desires. And so you're broken because you see how fall, uh, how much you've fallen short. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the attitude that a woman going into an abortion clinic or anyone just in general that, you know, I'm going to go in this strip club and, you know, God's a forgiving God, so he'll forgive me. I'm going to go and get drunk. I know God's a forgiving God, so he's going to forgive me. Yeah. That attitude is not one of contrition. That attitude is one of hardness. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, James chapter 4, God resists the proud. That yeah. is pride. That is pride, and that is bringing pride into the equation. The Bible says God resists that. Yeah. He does not delight in that. And I think it's it's not recognizing that God is a just God and a wrathful God. Yeah, it, it shows a grave lack of the fear of the Lord. Exactly. And and a, and a lack of the fear of the Lord, listen, the Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You'll be a wise person, fear God. Right, right. And, and something you said, he doesn't want us groveling. No, but... He also doesn't want us continuing down a destructive path. Yeah. And any path that takes us away from God is a destructive path. And it's important to know that a third of abortions are repeat abortions. Yeah. Statistically, a third of those women are continuing in sin. This is one of many abortions. Yeah. And if there doesn't come a point at, at some point where someone is willing to speak truth about God's forgiveness um, and what true repentance looks like, they will continue down yeah. that path. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Into further and, and that's further been evil. one of the burdens on our hearts as we, you know, we we deal with this as far as women going into the abortion clinic with an attitude of, you know, I'm going to do this and God's going to forgive me. And we've already talked about that. But we also deal with the women who've come out after right. the abortions. Right. And, you know, God has really blessed us with some wonderful people in the afternoon teams. Because the way it's set up here in Charlotte, I don't know how it is in, in other cities, but basically the abortion patients come in in the morning. They're typically there by 11.30 to have their abortion. Right. So we know that we're reaching those who are coming in uh, for an abortion. In the afternoons, you know, after the abortionist gets there and, and sometime after, you'll have the people that have come out who've either taken the abortion pill or had a surgical abortion. And that is a post-abortive woman <laughs> directly after having had an abortion. Is the message of forgiveness important there? Or, mm-hmm. or should we take an attitude, and we might could justify it, take an attitude of, you know, just hey, you wicked murderer, look what you've done. I mean, yeah. could we say that? Would we be justified in saying that? Possibly. But would that be helpful? So it's almost like, like you said, the timing mm-hmm. can be really important. The timing in the sense of what's the goal. And yeah. the goal is restoration. Ultimately, the goal is restoration of those people to God. Yeah. And how do you restore um, in, in the person who's contemplating abortion but has not yet done it you restore by really talking about the severity of that sin against God and you can't do that against your Lord and against that baby it is wrong it is evil restoration of the woman who has already done it is uh, I think many fold and I think we discussed this already a little bit in another uh, podcast but um, first of all a recognition of sin which they at first when they come out the uh, statistically they're going to feel relief there's mm-hmm. not going to be necessarily that sense of deep sin so a recognition of sin and then leading them through the process by which you are restored back to God through confession repentance and then faith, submission yeah. of your life. Well, just practically speaking, maybe some folks might ask, okay, so what do you say to a woman that's just come out after having had an abortion? Yeah. Like, how do you, you know, how do you, you know, not make light of what she just did, right. but right. also offer forgiveness? I mean, right. you, you know, you've shared your testimony. You've talked about it several times on the podcast yeah. about you yourself being post-abortive yeah. you've had an abortion and and you know some of what goes on and yeah. and you can speak to that and certainly you're not going to speak to that in a way that that 
makes it look like there's no forgiveness. Right. But how do you address that? I mean, yeah. from your standpoint. Well, and I, I think it is hard. I, we train our afternoon teams, and the first thing I tell them is, this is a delicate balance that you're walking. Be, you, you want them to talk to you. Um, you do want to be able to get the, the literature into their hands that has post-abortive help. But you do want them to recognize that what they just did was wrong. And the overwhelming majority, I would say, of them that walk out say, it's okay, I'm good. Yeah. But so typically, and not that I have the answer, but some of the things that I will call out are things like, I know that many women deeply regret an abortion. And if you don't feel sorrow right now, you very well may down the road and you may need help yeah learning how to deal with that and de- I'll sometimes even say deal with this sin for yourself and before God yeah so it's introducing I hope gently the the idea that what you did there uh, causes grief and despair and is sin yeah um, and if they say I'm good uh, I think we've talked about that in the past. I will often counter with, well, I, I myself thought that at one point in my life as well. And I'll go into my own story and how that my immediate response was relief and thinking everything was now going to be fine. But as it turned out, the older and older I got and the further, the more I understood God uh, and the depth of that sin the actually the the greater the burden and pain and sorrow yeah over that was so that's how i deal with it yeah i'm not sure what others say and i don't think that there's any magic thing that you can say but i think the principle of what you say is don't gloss over the fact that what happened there was wrong yeah yeah you know know, timing you know people might say you know timing is not that important even your volume actually can be important you know there's a there's a proverb uh, i forget exactly where it's at but i Mm. promise it's in there okay that basically says if you bless your brother loudly early in the morning it will be received as a curse so there is a certain timing that what is that telling us well timing early in the morning volume actually can matter your tone of voice can matter (laughs) you know Whenever the words maybe necessarily don't matter so much. They do matter. I'm not saying they don't, and the Bible certainly acknowledges correct words, <laughs> words that are true to the word are important. Um, but your timing and your volume does matter. And yeah. there, There's a scripture, it's a messianic prophecy uh, scripture. It says, speaking of Jesus, that he won't quench a smoking flax nor break a bruised reed. Right. And what that's saying is, you know, basically those who are already broken, Jesus is not going to break them even further. You know, God God doesn't kick people when they're down. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us when we're down is when God is willing to raise us up. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will yeah. lift you up. And so there's yeah. a certain sense that, you know, I've encountered, and I certainly I've encountered a lot of women that come out, they're just arrogant and proud. And how do you respond to that? Typically, you know what, I'll just bow my head and pray for them. Mm-hmm. Because typically if they're coming out and they have an attitude of just bitterness and against me, because what it is is really the conviction they feel in themselves, then I might, I might sting them with a little bit of truth and say, you know what, you just killed your child. You should yeah. turn to the Lord. I might yeah. say something like that, but I'm not going to engage in some lengthy conversation with them typically. I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit to do his work in their heart. But I have encountered, I mean, just um, it was a couple of days ago, it was one of those days, you know, sometimes things just come in waves. And it was one of those days where we had like three women in a row that came out of the abortion clinic with, I mean, just bawling. They were just yeah. crying yeah. and their hearts were broken over what they had just done. Am I going to look at her and I'm going to say, look what you just did, you, you wicked sinner. No, she's already broken. Right. She already acknowledges what she's done. She's totally ripe for the message of forgiveness. Yeah. That's the person then that she needs to know she's recognized her sin she's recognized that it's broken her heart and and i i would say that very directly i can see that your heart is broken i am so sorry can we talk about there is help there is hope there is forgiveness yeah can can i share with you how you can find that i mean one of the things i'm not going to say though is i'm not going to say you know you don't need to cry you're forgiven because that's not true no she (laughs) needs to cry she needs to weep and that to me is such a positive sign that she recognizes and the danger there is um you don't want someone becoming suicidal yeah and and 
the, uh, knowing from my own experience, you can. It's, yeah. it's horrific. When you recognize the depth of what you've done, it can take you over the edge. Yeah. So, so that message of forgiveness then, which is why the afternoon teams for us in our ministry is so important. That and, message, and it's important for others who are doing sidewalk counseling or working in a pregnancy center understand this these points too. You that's know? true. That's true because at that point, the message of, of forgiveness may very well save that woman's life. Yeah. And also, rather than having her turn inward with that pain into anger or, or self-destruction or bitterness towards God, hopefully the, the opposite will happen, that she will then release that pain and use it for God's glory. And that's, where, that's again, that restoration. The goal yeah. is re- restoration. Yeah. One of the things I say oftentimes is, you know, we don't begin with God until we've come to the end of ourselves. That's and true. sometimes it's something like doing something as horrible as an abortion mm-hmm. that will bring us to the end of ourselves to show us, you know what, <laughs> I'm not good. Right. I am not right. I am yeah. not going in the right direction, and I need someone to rescue me. And so hopefully yeah. in that situation, there's a gospel voice. There's a, there's a proclaimer of truth on that sidewalk, at that pregnancy center, at that, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, you know. A lot of times God will break post-abortive women in a church service when somebody's mm-hmm. preaching about abortion and they're broken. Mm-hmm. And hopefully there's somebody there that will offer the message of forgiveness and restoration in light of that sin mm-hmm. um, and bring the hope that comes in the name of Jesus. And not just glossing yeah. over it. Again, not just saying, well, you're forgiven, so it's, it's okay. It's not okay. Yeah. But if you'll turn to the Lord Jesus, you know, I've said this quite a few times. I remember one lady, I may have even shared this on the podcast before, I may have not, but there was, it was a couple of years ago, this young lady was coming out of the abortion clinic parking lot and she stopped in the driveway and I'm setting up, I'm actually taking down the sound system and putting it away and she stops in the driveway and I hand her one of our brochures. Mm-hmm. And that's an important point, guys, that have some kind of information. We have one that's called um, Hope and Healing right. and it has your testimony in it mm-hmm. and it's got the gospel in there and it talks about some of the risks and things associated with abortion and some of the things to watch out for. Anyway, And so I it has her, healing resources on it. Yeah, exactly, which is yeah. Local ministries have, they can correct. connect with and whatever. Yeah. And so I handed her a brochure, and, uh, and she said, you know, I wish I would have listened to the truth you guys were telling me out here as mm-hmm. I was going in. That She was back for a follow-up appointment. I said, I wish I would have listened to the truth you guys were telling me out here instead of the lies they were telling me inside of there. Yeah. And she says, I know God is a forgiving God, but I don't think he can ever forgive me for this. Mm-hmm. And I go right to First John. You know, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm not saying that just to, all you have to do is say you're sorry and acknowledge. No, I'm saying that to say there is an availability of God by his mercy to forgive. If you'll confess your sin, if you'll acknowledge, and I went right for it. I said, you know, you've got to acknowledge that you've sinned against God. Yeah. And when you took that baby's life, you didn't just make a mistake. You didn't just do something that hurt you, and I'm you know, I'm using a very in this conversation using a very soft tone. Right. I'm not, re- right. you know, I'm not, you know, condemning her in the sense, you know, I'm not being, you know, hard nosed in that sense, but I'm pointing her to the scripture, and I'm pointing her to the Savior, and that's yeah. what we need to do. Yeah. We've got to point people to the Savior. We're not their Savior, and so right. our first, you know, we don't need to just point them to some ministry. We don't need to just point them to some whatever. We need to point them to the Savior. Yeah. Turn to the Lord Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, turn yeah. to Jesus, and he is willing to forgive and to save all those who will truly turn to him. Yeah. That's the message of and, the gospel. And that is truly the only, the only real hope and healing that any post-abortive woman is going to find. They, it, it is, you know, as, probably as horrific a sin as a woman can do yeah. to destroy her own child. And there is... There is never going to be in this world a way that you can rationalize that kind of pain yeah. away, but um, but Jesus can heal your heart yeah. and can um, can even use that pain to to further His kingdom. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. a message that is critical for them to hear, and for forgiveness is is just essential. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's a message, just like the message of the value of human life, mm-hmm. the uh, the message of forgiveness, healing, and restoration, salvation that comes through Jesus Christ is the message that we need to be bringing in, in this realm. That's why this podcast is Gospel-Centered Pro-Life. 
right. is because it's not just about saving the lives of babies. I don't yeah. want to say just to minimize that because that's massively important. Mm -hmm. But it's also about bringing the gospel, bringing the gospel to these men and women at the abortion clinics. Hopefully their heart is softened by the gospel before they go in and they choose life for their baby based on their acceptance of the gospel. We've right. seen that happen. We have. But if they've had the abortion and they come out, our prayer is that their heart is softened by the gospel rather than hardened by their sin, because that mm -hmm. can happen. Mm -hmm. It's softened by the gospel and they turn to the Lord Jesus because we're there bringing this message of healing, restoration, forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. And you know, yeah. that's our job as Christians yeah. to bring Christ um, and especially to those very dark places. So, yeah. you know, with that, I think we'll wrap this thing up. We appreciate those who have listened and hopefully this podcast has been a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, we'd love to hear any suggestions you have for other podcasts. We'd love to hear maybe just some feedback on this podcast. Is there a point that we that we just kind of glazed over and you want to hear a little more about? Mm -hmm. We'd certainly love to, to get into that a little deeper. Is there something, you know, someone you'd like for us to interview on the podcast? We'd love to do that. We'd like to hear back from you. So, you know, email me, dparks at citiesforlife.com. Vicky at vcasiorg.com. Share these podcasts. You can share them on Facebook. You can share them, you know, I guess on Twitter or whatever. You just get the link and, and share that. And uh, leave us some feedback in the uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts and on Google Podcasts and other podcast services. There's a place where you can add a review and you can you know, let us know how we're doing. But we do appreciate you guys uh, for listening, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys real soon. God bless. Give me an outlet for gratitude I know it will cost me my life But nothing's too precious since I met you